Today, I'm gonna be talking about Ichigo's girlfriend. No, 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 that's it. That's his wife. I'm talking about Ichigo's side chick, Rukia Kuchi, the mother of Ichika Abarai and the strongest captain of Squad 13. However, Rukia wasn't always this powerful as it took her many trials and tribulations to make it this far. But what makes her so strong is achieving a power only a few ever could hope to unlock. Bankai. Let's go! That's right, not only is Rukia part of a noble family, meaning she's racking up all those dollar bills, but her Bankai is literally one of the strongest in the entire series. I mean, what did you expect? We're talking about one of Ichigo's side chicks. I, I mean, his best friend, so she has some of that main character is too, you know? And to celebrate this, we have introduced a special limited edition Bankai embroidery merch on AnimeDrip.shop. If you use the code Rukia right now, you will get 20% percent off right now. You gotta act quickly though because it's about to leave the store soon. But to understand how Rukia turned from this absolutely useless into this. Do you know who my favorite Soul Reaper is? No. Yeah. We need to go all the way back to her origins. Roughly 150 years before the events of Bleach, Rukia and her older sister Hisana were brought to the 78th Rukongai district after dying in the human world. Being unable to care for Rukia, Hisana would leave her for the streets. However, she found her own family as Rukia would join a group of friends which included Renji Abarai, her future husband. During this time, Rukia learned she had dormant spiritual pressure, and years later, when her entire friend group besides Renji had died, she vowed to leave the district she was bound to, which led both of them to join the Shinigami Academy. She would then eventually catch the attention of the Kuchigi clan and would be asked to be adopted by them. This is where she met Byakuya. It's revealed that after abandoning Rukia, Hisana would eventually marry the Squad 6 captain. Hisana, due to an illness, would pass away but not before requesting Byakuya to find and look after her little sister. Upon adoption, Rukia would immediately graduate from the academy, leaving her best friend Renji in the dust. With her new nobility, Rukia was assigned to the 13th division, where she would meet Kayan Shiba and his wife Miyako. Rukia would come to admire both of them, but everything changed when Miyako was killed by a hollow. During their mission for revenge, Kayan sadly got possessed by the hollow who killed his wife as well. Unable to bear the sight of this, Rukia killed Kayan, in which he appreciated her for because who the hell wants to be a Kahlo? But even after the thanks she got, Rukia was haunted by this guilt of her mentor's death. Due to this, she avoided approaching his family being the Shiba clan, which led to some tension between them. However, Rukia is eventually assigned to Karakura town as its local Shinigami, where she could no longer avoid the Shiba blood in Ichigo Kurosaki. After an encounter with a Hollow that attacked Ichigo's sister, Rukia would end up transferring almost all of her power to Ichigo, making him her substitute Shinigami. Rukia would assist Ichigo in his Soul Reaper duties and become close friends with them during her time in the human world. However, transferring your powers to someone else is considered a crime in the eyes of the Soul Society. And so, Rukia would eventually be apprehended and taken back to Soul Society by her brother Byakuya and friend Renji to be executed. Ichigo, determined to get his side chick back, teams up with Orihime, Chad, and Ishida to rescue her. During during her execution, Rukia has accepted her fate and decides to go with a smile, but in the most badass way, Ichigo saves her in her final moments. It's revealed here that Rukia's execution was all planned by Aizen to obtain Kisuke Urahara's powerful invention, the Hogyoku, which was inside Rukia all along. Now, why did Urahara put Hogyoku inside of Rukia? Uh, for the plot, of course, uh, you know? It's for the plot. Only Ymir knows, right? <laughs> Aizen says that he hoped Rukia's execution would give him easy access to the Hogyoku, but it doesn't even matter, as he was able to extract it from her body and then dips. After the battle, Rukia would make amends with her brother, who apologizes for his actions. I mean, this guy tried to kill his younger sister. Who, who does that? Due to the revelation of Aizen's betrayal, Rukia is pardoned for her crimes, and so society officially appoints Ichigo as a substitute soul reaper. Rukia would then return to the world of the living in the Arankar arc to protect
protect Karakura Town from Aizen's army. During Grim Zhao's invasion, we finally get to see Rukia's power firsthand against her fight with D. Roy. Yep, that's right, it took 200 episodes for us to see her in action. But oh, was it glorious. Because Rukia shows us that her biggest basic strength is her mastery of Kido, as she is able to use up to Haro number 73 without incantation. She can also switch from Zanjutsu to Kido without any delay upon using her Zanpakuto. She has great skill in various spells with unique combinations and can even use multiple spells at once. She is a true Kido master. But the most important thing showcased during this fight is her Shikai, Sode no Shirayuki. When activated, Sode no Shirayuki has the basic ability to freeze almost anything, even the Reishi created spirit weapons used by Quincy's. The blade does not actually spread coldness through itself though, as its true ability is to bring the body temperature of its wielder to below freezing. As a result, anything the wielder touches freezes. The sword is merely an extension of Rukia's reach. With this power, Rukia can even momentarily kill herself by controlling Reishi, putting her in a state of cryostasis. This essentially makes her immune to all substances that enter her body. Another ability at her disposal is that she can make the ground below freezing, resulting in ice quakes. But the most powerful aspect of her Shikai are da dances? I'm, I'm confused! Well, it's true. Rukia's Shikai command is dance, and Sode no Shirayuki has multiple ice techniques called dances. The first dance is Some no Mai, Sukiro, which she uses against Diroi. With this, she creates a circle using the tip of her sword, and anything within the circle will freeze, including everything above it in the air. Like, shortly after being frozen, the victim will shatter along with the ice. Using this attack, she quickly killed Diroi. The second dance is Sugi no Mai Hakuren. Using this technique, Rukia punctures the ground to create a semicircle, which creates a powerful avalanche of cold air, flash freezing, whatever it comes in contact with. The final dance is San no Mai Shirafune. When using this, Rukia gathers moisture in the air to the tip of her zanpakuto, creating an ice blade. This not only pierces the target, but completely freezes them and the immediate surrounding areas, along with augmenting the length of Rukia's sword. Basically, this just makes her sword longer. This is great and all, but what happens if Rukia can't reach her sword? Well, she's got that covered too. Using her technique, Ice Rope Connection, Rukia creates an ice extension connecting her hand to the sword, allowing her to use its abilities from a distance. As you can see, even without Bankai, Rukia is an incredibly talented soul reaper, and she would only continue to grow. After the initial attack by the Arankars, Orohime is kidnapped by Aizen and taken to his base in Waco Mundo. Worried Aizen would raise her up, Rukia would assist Ichigo and the others to get her friends back. It's during this rescue attempt where Rukia encounters a spot at number 9, Arun Riero Arun Rieri. But when this guy takes his mask off, it's revealed to be none other than Rukia's mentor, Kayan Shiba, who should be dead. Yup, Rukia is standing in front of the mentor figure she killed. Her regret of killing Kain completely consumes her. However, after seeing Kain's attempts to manipulate her into killing her friends, she realizes this is nothing more than an imposter and that Espada number 9 is merely impersonating Kain. He did, however, absorb Kain's abilities after consuming the hollow that possessed him. So even if it's not really him, Rukia still has to fight her mentor. During this fight, Rukia demonstrates her expertise in swordsmanship, as she's able to defend herself against Espada 9's attacks, which are incredible sword skills of Kai and Shiba. After activating her Shikai, she gains the resolve to kill the Arankar, knowing that Kai will always be with her and kills Espada 9. This fight was a statement by Rukia that she has become even stronger after the death of her master and has surpassed a lieutenant's strength in the Gote 13. Rukia would then assist Ichigo at the Five Towers of Las Noches, where she would fight Yami alongside Chad and Renji. Of course, Chad and Renji get wasted, but Rukia maintains herself until the goat Ichigo shows up and finishes the fight. Rukia would then have to temporarily say goodbye to Ichigo at the end of the fake Karakura town arc, as after unlocking his super powerful main character powers, Ichigo lost his soul reaper abilities. This meant that he can no longer go to the soul society and can no longer hang out with his bestie Rukia. But we all know she wasn't gonna let that slide. 
side. After Ichigo's full brain powers have been stolen by Ginjo, Rukia stabs this man in the back, and this sword restores Ichigo's main character status once more. Rukia is her. Like, bro, this girl really went lengths to make sure this man got his powers back, but you think this is where it ends? Oh, no, no, no. In fact, Rukia is a baby compared to where she goes from here. What do you mean by that? So feast on this five star peak fiction. So of course, what I'm referring to is the thousand year blood war arc. This is where Rukia goes from an above average soul reaper to a true captain level Shinigami. During the initial invasion of soul society, Rukia would get wrecked like everyone else. This is due to her reacting to her brother's supposed death at the hands of Sternwitter ass not. Believing her brother was dead, Rukia thought her rage was enough to take revenge, but yep, Rukia gets Gets her ass whooped too. I guess she's been around Renji for too long, you know? The L energy has infiltrated her Ryatsu too. Rukia being gravely injured was taken to the Soul King's palace to recover and received some special main character steroids from none other than the strongest Shinigami himself, Ichibe Kyosube. His ball deep training greatly increases Rukia's overall powers from strength to especially her speed. But the biggest thing she unlocks from this training is her Bankai. Rukia's Bankai is named Hake no Hagame, where in English it translates to White Haze Punishment. Just like, I want to get punished by your Bankai, you know? <laughs> Cut that out, cut that out. No, I don't think I will. Rukia transforms into the Queen of Ice. Like, goddamn, this drip is insane. Did she get that from Anime Drip Shop? Hey, the Bankai hoodie, it's embroidered. Go get it. We see this in full action when Byakuya and Rukia would face off against Ass Not during the second invasion of the Soul Society, because we all know Byakuya wants that sweet revenge. But sadly, our goat doesn't get the spotlight as it's all on Rukia. After gaining encouragement from her brother, her role model and parental figure, Rukia has the resolve to use her full power. She goes from her basic Soul Reaper attire to a white ankle length kimono with long white ribbons connecting to it. Kind of similar to how her sword looks in the Shikai. Her hair also becomes white and has a crown of ice on the back of her head, making her a true ice princess. Her son Bakto's blade also becomes transparent ice and its power is insane. Rukia's Bankai increases the range of her ability to reach below freezing temperatures of absolute zero. To put this into perspective, she can freeze you up to negative 273.15 Celsius or 459.67 Fahrenheit. As a person from Texas, that's cold. This is the lowest limit of the thermodynamic temperature scale, being colder than even outer space. Upon release, her Bankai unleashes a pillar of this cold mist that covers a wide area. If anyone is touched by it, they will instantly freeze and crumble to dust. Bruh, like Rukia came in and froze ass knots ass, bruh. It's this power which solidified Rukia as captain material. However, there is a downside to this Bankai. While extremely powerful, the slightest mistake could kill the user, as Rukia's sword could freeze her entire body if she's not careful. For the rest of the Thousand Year Blood War, Rukia takes more of a support role during the battles against the other Stern Ritters and the Royal Guard. But her taking down Asnot was a great contribution towards the Shinigami and a personal accomplishment for her during the war. After the Thousand Year Blood War, Rukia would be appointed as captain of the 13th Division after Ukitake's sacrifice. She would also settle down and finally realize how much Renji cared for her and they get married. They even have a kid called Ichika Abarai. But there is a chance Renji took the L, she's actually Ichigo's kid. But with Renji's new true Bankai, I guess she really wanted Renji's on top too at the end of the day. But if you want to explore more of Renji's sword yourself, then click on the video on screen right now.